My brother Knights, it's an honor to speak with you. My address is virtual, but for the first time in three years, the order is not. All but two state conventions are back in person. The Knights of Columbus is back where we belong. Reaching this day was not easy, and before anything else, I want to thank all of you who helped lead the order through the pandemic's many challenges. And to all the wives who are with us, thank you for being a constant source of support and strength. We truly wouldn't be here without you. We confronted this crisis with strength and resolve as we have every challenge in our history. From food banks to blood drives, from supporting our parishes to helping neighbors in need, through countless acts of quiet courage, the Knights of Columbus stepped up. It has long been said, where there's a need, there's a night. And you proved it once again. You did so by quickly implementing new initiatives as well as strengthening our long-standing programs. The mutual aid we provide through our life insurance is a case in point. We now have more than $119 billion of life insurance in force. Every policy we sell protects a family. It also supports everything else we do for the least fortunate and most vulnerable. Whether it's coats for kids, food for families, or the global wheelchair mission, we are serving even more people than we were before the pandemic. And in January, we reached a historic milestone in one of our signature programs, the Ultrasound Initiative. We have now placed over 1,500 ultrasound machines in pregnancy resource centers. Each one is changing minds and winning hearts for life. And each one is saving lives. We can all be proud of that legacy, even as we continue to build on it. It's remarkable to think how far we've come and how much we've accomplished. Yet we must also remember how much more we have to do. The times are getting more challenging, not less. Perhaps this is most evident in the war in Ukraine. All of us are deeply disturbed by Russia's invasion. The atrocities and the indiscriminate killing of mothers and children is especially horrific. It is the opposite of the culture of life we have committed ourselves to building. So as Knights of Columbus, we will stand with the Ukrainian people and we will support the vulnerable wherever they are. This is also personal for us. The first Ukrainian Knights joined the order just 10 years ago. So we are supporting our brothers and their families. We stand with them as they defend their country and serve refugees. Immediately after the war began, I announced the Ukraine Solidarity Fund, and I called on all Knights of Columbus to support it. The fund has now exceeded $10 million and counting. Every dollar makes a difference for Ukrainian widows, orphans, and refugees. Every dollar lifts up our brother Knights in Ukraine and shines a light in a moment of great darkness. We have also established a strong relief presence on the border of Ukraine and Poland. Polish and Ukrainian Knights have worked together to get truckloads of supplies into Kyiv and around the country. Through our unity and fraternity, we delivered charity directly into Ukraine when others could not. We have set up mercy centers modeled on the KFC huts in World War I. Just over 100 years ago, those huts welcomed Allied soldiers with the words, everybody welcome, everything free. Today, those same words greet Ukrainian families in their own language, both on the border and in cities like Warsaw, Krakow, and Rodham. Polish Knights deserve special praise for their tireless efforts. They have done the lion's share of the hard work on the ground, distributing aid and welcoming desperate refugees into their homes. 
Across the order, our efforts are making history. We have responded with speed and strength, and so much of the credit goes to you and your families. Thank you for standing in solidarity with Ukraine. There is more work to do in the days ahead. We will continue to deliver for our Ukrainian brothers and their families and their countrymen. They did not ask for this war, but they are asking for our help. We will be there for them today and tomorrow. And every day we will pray for them and we will pray for an end to this unjust war. Ukraine is counting on us and so are many others, our countries, our communities, our church. They need us to be knights for this moment. And we are ready. If our history proves anything, it's that we do not fight the battles of yesterday. We fight the battles of today for the sake of tomorrow. And while we draw on our past, we are focused on the present to ensure our future. So what does that look like in 2022? What does it mean to be a knight in the current moment? It means to stand for the truth and to stand for life wherever it is threatened. We face many challenges and they all have a spiritual dimension. We read about it in the Gospels and in the lives of the saints. We hear in St. Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus, we are not contending against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. There is a very real struggle going on in the world. It emanates from ideas and ideologies, some of which result in physical wars, but others that strike at the very heart of society, the family, and human nature. It's not just that some things have changed like smartphones and constant communication. The very foundations of our culture are shifting. Pope Francis has put it best, Ours is not an era of change, but the change of an era. Yet while social foundations erode, the truth that must ground our lives remains rock solid. And so does the mission of the Knights of Columbus. Blessed Michael McGivney, in his faith and wisdom, prepared us for this moment. He and the founding members gathered around him chose our name, especially the title Knights, because they understood that we must be ready to defend the truth and the people we love. He didn't start a humanitarian group that sells insurance, nor did he start an insurance company that does humanitarian work. Father McGivney started something that does both of these things yet so much more. He founded the Knights of Columbus, a band of brothers called to stand with Christ for our families and for those in need. We are Blessed Michael McGivney's spiritual heirs and we must answer that call. There are four key areas where we must focus. Each one draws on our best traditions and builds upon them. Each answers an acute need of the moment. First and foremost, we must strengthen families, both spiritually and financially. The need is urgent. Catholic parents are struggling to pass on their beliefs. Catholic children are falling away from the faith in record numbers. For many, this reality hits close to home. Few things are harder to watch, and few things demand more of our attention. One of my top priorities is launching new programs to strengthen the family. Several are in the works, and I encourage you to make an extra effort to involve families in council life. 
And because we care about the spiritual health of families, we must also strive to meet their financial needs. We speak of the KFC difference. There is a deeper, transcendent meaning behind everything we do. While other companies care only about sales, we care about souls. That's why we're expanding our business into bold, new territory. From KFC Asset Advisors to mutual funds, we are now poised to become the go-to financial resource for Catholic families. Father McGivney worked hard to strengthen families, and he would be proud of our efforts. But he also knew that we must strengthen men. That is the second area of focus. The Order has always aimed to help the Catholic man, and for good reason. It starts a chain reaction. When you get the man right, you get the marriage right, the family right, the parish right. What starts with each man can affect the whole culture. Yet the reverse holds true as well. When the man goes wrong, so does everything else. That's why we offer programs to help men stay strong. This includes the video series such as Into the Breach and Everyday Heroes. We've also launched the new Vivat Jesus Prayer Planner, which can help men build an intentional prayer life. And we're working on other new initiatives to deepen the faith of men. The third thing we must do is recommit ourselves to being the strong right arm of the church. Our priests and bishops need our help to keep the parish strong. Many parishes face a tough road to recovery, and the Knights of Columbus can be there to help them. Our priests and bishops need us to take up the church's mission of evangelization. To that end, we're beginning a new initiative on evangelization and discipleship. It's focused on training our brother knights to share their faith in their councils and parishes. If we don't evangelize the culture, the culture will evangelize us. So let's do our part to be the men God calls us to be and help others to do the same. Fourth, it is equally important that we expand our witness to charity. There are clear charitable needs that require our leadership. And one of our greatest priorities is protecting the unborn. In the coming months, the U.S. Supreme Court may overturn Roe versus Wade. If that happens, states will be free to roll back abortion on demand. And the Knights of Columbus will be ready. We'll put even more ultrasound machines in pregnancy resource centers. We'll offer even more support for pregnant and new mothers and their children. And we'll advocate with our elected leaders to end abortion and protect life. That should have happened a long time ago, and the Knights of Columbus will never rest until a culture of life is finally restored. The final focus is membership growth. In a spiritual struggle like the one we're in, manpower matters. With more men, we can strengthen more Catholic families. We can do more for priests and for the whole church. We can do more for charity, both near and far. My brother Knights, is that not what we want? And do we not offer what young men need? They're looking to be part of something bigger than themselves. It doesn't get bigger than a global brotherhood of faithful Catholic men. They're looking for practical fellowship that helps them grow on a personal level. It doesn't get more practical or more personal than a band of brothers urging one another forward. Last August, I issued a challenge to every member of the order. I asked that before the next Supreme Convention, each night invite at least two men to join our ranks. Today, I reiterate that call. Think of what will happen if we do this. 
we will set the stage for a new era of growth in good men and good works. And we will be better prepared to fight and win this spiritual battle. I believe we will because everything I've asked us to do is everything we've always done. For 140 years, we have strengthened families, men, and the Catholic Church. We have embraced a charity that evangelizes, and we have grown by leaps and bounds despite the many challenges we've faced. These tasks are harder than they used to be, but that only makes our mission all the more necessary. In a spiritual war, you don't back down. You step up and you stand in the breach. And we are doing exactly that. I recently met with a Ukrainian family who experienced this firsthand. The wife, Ola, told me how she, her husband, who was a brother knight, and their three kids fled their home as the war began. And she told me how the Knights of Columbus were there every step of the way. Our Ukrainian brothers helped them get to Poland. Our Polish brothers helped them find their way to the United States. And now our American brothers are helping them build a new life in Pennsylvania. After she finished her story, Ola got quiet. And then she told me how much we mean to her. She said, the Knights of Columbus are, and I quote, good men at work doing godly things. And then she said that we are what the world needs. My brother Knights, she is right. We are and we must be good men at work doing godly things. And that is what the world needs. As we strive to win the battles of this moment, let us place our hope and our trust in the Lord. And let us answer his call, for in him lies the victory. Thank you, and vivat Jesus.